So, Polar Talks. With brilliant minds comes brilliant ideas. And such a brilliant mind belonged to Stikan Andersson, the founder of the Polar Music Prize. You know the impact his mind has had on music and the music industry. Stikan had the ability to create not only a concept, but to provide the soil, the nutrition and the long-term care to help that very concept grow and flourish. And Polar Talks, as presented by the Polar Music Prize, has over the years come to be called a major think tank for the world of music. Although this is a highly attractive denotation, I've always felt it to be even more. In stark contrast to a think tank, which is seldom not limited both in space and due to ideological, uh, political ideology, uh, that's a difficult word, political ideology. Polar Talks is more of an ongoing, open, including discourse, a non-stop discussion on the power of music, if you will. And Polar Talks is, of course, part of the Polar Music Week every year, preceding the prize ceremony, which this year will be held tomorrow in honor of Wayne Shorter and Sting. But it's also an international series of inspiring talks and lectures on cutting-edge topics running all year around. At talks, the target is usually set on what lies ahead. But to understand the future, we need to revisit the past. And only through mapping and understanding the tendencies built up in your rearview mirror, you will be able to clearly see ahead. So many are the topics that we've been discussed here at Polar Talks, and then sparked a development. In 2013, we introduced the work of the United Nations Human Rights Council on the first report ever on artistic rights, discussing freedom of speech, as well as the need for safe havens for music creators. The next year, the first Swedish safe havens for music creators, Stockholm and Malmö, were declared, welcoming my dear friend and previous Polar Talks participant, Rami Essam, the voice of the Egyptian uprising, to Malmö. In remapping on previous talks, we will be discussing the connection between music and memory, as it was so powerfully captured by the Alive Inside documentary at Polar Talks during Polar Music Week last year. Another well-known Polar Talks topic, diversity and equality, has been our companion over the years. Last year's laureate, Max Martin, constantly promotes the importance of mentorship for bringing diversity into music. At Polar Talks last year, in this very house, he spoke on being a mentor as well as the importance of letting others and their talent touch and inspire you. Because to him, it is a two-way communication. Since then, the collaboration between Swedish Society of Songwriters, Composers and Authors, SCARP, and the Swedish Arts Schools Council, with the support of Max Martin, has been a greatly appreciated initiative by many young aspiring songwriters. And of course, the Polar Music Prize founder, Stikan Andersson, had no doubt about the power of music. He wanted to create a forum where this was made clear to each and every one, and against the backdrop of the Polar Talks impact, uh, well, we can say that he succeeded. So what's up for today? Well, we will be taking the Polar Talks discourse even further, following up on many of the challenges confronting us, and how meeting these in a positive and innovative way can shape a bright future for the many, not the few. The invited speakers are experts across a broad spectrum, such as gender equality, politics, digital design, advanced music technology, psychoacoustics, and sound branding. And furthermore, we'll be taking on this challenge of diversity ourselves. Yes. Even an institution like the Polar Music Prize should be able to take a step outside itself, survey its operations, and take measures for development. 
and the time has come to broadening the reach of the Polar Music Prize through putting diversity in all its forms at the top of the list. We will do this through a new, exciting collaboration between the Polar Music Prize and the International Music Council. The Council has unparalleled links with composers and musicians across the globe, and to tap into this knowledge and to shine a light on talent that has yet to reach a global audience will be thrilling, to say the least. Also, we'll have a look at the use of sound and music in applied sense, how music can exert psychological power over our thoughts and biochemistry and have profound neurological effects on the nervous system. And we'll get a fascinated glimpse into the brave new music world of music technology, the future of music, and perhaps what it takes to become a Polar Music Prize laureate in the future. So today's talks will close with an exclusive live interview with Mr. Wayne Shorter, one of this year's two Polar Music Prize laureates, for those of you who have been fortunate enough to obtain a ticket for that special event later today. So to conclude, this afternoon is all about what Stikan Andersson so brilliantly formulated in his vision for the Polar Music Prize. His ambition to build bridges has over the years given the form of Polar Talks. And today, we may cross some of these bridges together. So once again, a warm welcome and thank you. So, back to the future. And as said, to understand the future, we need to revisit the past. And what better way then to revisit some of last year's talks? I'm therefore very happy to welcome Lisa Lindström, CEO at design agency Doberman. Lisa has been appointed Sweden's Service Innovator of the Year and listed as one of the top 10 female leaders in Sweden. And we invite, yes, of course. And we invite her up to uh, follow up on the panel she moderated at last year's Polar Talks on the connection between music and leadership. After this, Professor Gunnar Buschel will give us an update on international research within the connection between music and memory. And some of you will remember the fant fantastic presentation at last year uh, on the film uh, Alive Inside, the documentary, which was fantastic. And we'll hear a bit more on Gunnar's view on what was presented and what has happened since then. Uh, Gunnar is, of course, uh, a pioneer in molecular biology in Sweden and is now advancing the cross-scientific field where culture, brain, health and learning meet each other. But yes, they're all worth applause. But first, let us welcome Lisa Lindström. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. So, you were here last year. Yes. You had a great, inspiring panel. Uh, I think you will be the one to explain actually what you did, but I would like to hear also how that panel affected you. What, how did it affect you and did anything come out of it? So first of all, I was so fortunate to be on this stage and explore something that I've been thinking about a lot. And that is in this complex digital world, uh, we need to be more musical or, you know, use our musicality when we lead. So I had Hilian Barnikov, who is the CEO of Atelia, and Eva Hillered, who is not, well, in this case, a singing coach on stage, and we explored this. Uh, and I don't know if any of you were here, but we were also singing together with you. And what happened with us, who were kind of the leaders on this stage at that moment, was really inspiring. Because singing with an audience that we did not know was actually proving to us that there was something about this leadership and musicality connection. So I'm very sorry, but I think that when we went back, we were a little bit too loud <laughs> because we started chatting like this. How can we do something about this? How can this, we are doers, not only talkers. And Helian asked me, so Lisa, you know, you're going to do this coding 
with my executive team. And that is because I also think that the managers of today need to actually know how to code. Mm. So she said, could we also sing? <laughs> of course I said yes. <laughs> and Eva said, can I, can I be part of that? Can I be part of this singing and coding session that we invented over here last year? So a month later, we met and we designed the first ever singing and coding session with uh, Telia's executive team, and we carried it out in November. And after that, what happened? Well, first of all, it was a magic thing to use both parts of brains to teach executives how to be better decision makers in a non-linear world. Okay, one really interesting thing happened. The CFO, very unexpected, came to me and said, I found a new me. I did not know that I could actually sing this well, which was really mm. interesting. But I think the most interesting thing was, because we were only supposed to sing together, is when <laughs> the team goes out and start to sing for the rest of the organization. And I can tell you, not everyone was super comfortable about this, because no one said to them that they were supposed to go out and sing for everyone who works at Telia. But for a company who has dare as one of their values, what could be more daring than to have like a little bit shaky executives who are not super well of singing, singing happy to their organization? Which is brilliant. But I and I have to say, when they were so brave in doing this, shouldn't we out them even more? Let's, do, <laughs> let's do that. And because what happened then is that not only the executive team did this, they took 60 of their managers and had them also do going through the same session. And they actually trust us as much so we can see like a short movie on when they dare to go out and sing for yes. the organization. So if we can see that. This is the first time we're broadcasting this for anyone. Super daring from an old school, school, you know, industrial design company to show you this, isn't it? <laughs> they have been singing for two hours. They have been coding for two hours. They're pretty brave going out here and showing this to you guys. They will be our choir for next year's ceremony. So <laughs> anyone aspiring to be on... on as a leader for Telia, you know, you have some opening there now. They will be professionals, I think. Oh, great. Fantastic. I'll ask them. But this is, this is fantastic. But is this something, are you this brave? I know you are, actually. But did you have a relation to singing to understand how the mechanism could work? Or is this totally new to no, you as I, well then? No, because I actually had to reflect because some of my colleagues, so we work with digital, okay, and some of my colleagues asked me, so is this what you're now demanding of us? Are we supposed to go out and teach our clients to sing? I don't, I'm not sure if I signed up to that. So that made me think, no, I think that you should use yourself in, in kind of jumping first to dare and, 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 and show others how they can dare. And for me, singing is very natural because I was singing all my life. Uh, so I think this kind of thread in my life to, to use musicality so that we can make sure that we do work cross silos, mm. so that we do listen. The way that you, you know, when you sing in the choir, you need to listen in. You need to tune in. You need to know when to sing very loud or be very quiet. And of course, I couldn't have that metaphor if I was not, you know, singing in kommunala musikskolan in Mundal. <laughs> I, I think that would be a good ending note, but we want you back next year. And you promise that we will sing together next year? We will. Okay, thank you.
And now, welcome on stage, Professor Gunnar Buschel. Thank welcome, you. Gunnar. Thank you. So we touched a bit upon what happened uh, last year. We had the fantastic presentation and panel from the makers of the documentary Alive Inside. But I have to ask, because I know a bit of you, I, I'm a great fan, but some but. of this talk about the power of music, isn't it a bit of sentimental fluff? Is there some substance to it? Because I know that you're, the, you're not the sentimental fluffy professor. No. You're, you're really spot on and you want hard evidence. So I, I where want, are we? Yeah, I want hard evidence. And uh, uh, there's a lot of anecdotal sort of uh, stories going around that about choir music, about this type of music with elderly people singing for babies and you learn music in the womb, etc., etc., etc. And uh, this has been going on for thousands of years. Even the sort of uh, people in Greece actually ask these type of questions. But now we have a new tool, actually, of analyzing what's going on. I believe in empirical studies. So when I started this, being this hardcore molecular medicine guy, working with, with cancer and, and uh, uh, coronary heart disease, I got together with Gunilla von Barr, and she was the president of the Kungliga Musikhögskolan School here in Stockholm. And we said, let's do something about it. And we started a center. I'd started centers in biotech, so I knew what it was like to start a center. But then I was accused by my colleagues, this is not real stuff, it's fluffy. Mm -hmm. So what I did was something that uh, turned out to be rather uh, genius thing to do, that is to just go to the medical literature of the best uh, rank and to the leading universities in the world and see what have they been doing, what have they sort of produced. And then my tool was to create a homepage, and you'll see that a little bit later, where we sort of gather uh, studies with this type of high quality. Mm. And the doctors are now persuaded that this is good stuff. And I'll tell you at the end of this talk that this is good stuff and this is the beginning of a really new era where we demonstrate that culture has very important biological effects. And when it comes to this uh, uh, um, uh, live inside, music and memory, and I think you remember it, and it's also on our homepage, where you see this guy, Henry, totally, you know, demented guy sitting like this. And music wakes him up. Uh, and it was his, the music of his youth. Uh, Cab Calloway, if you remember him from, from Blues Brothers, you know. Do, 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 do. You remember Cab Calloway? Uh, this was a guy, and this guy wakes up and starts talking. It gets alive, actually, in a, in a way. And this is real. Of course, we don't know the, the mechanism behind this in the brain, but we know that this now has a, a documented effect, and that has been devalu evaluated by Brown University, one of the Ivy Universities in the United States, with the same rank as Karolinska Institute, so it's good stuff. And they can clearly demonstrate lower consumption of, uh, of, uh, of uh, um, you know, to prevent uh, depression and, and, and also anxiety and some of the bad behaviors that, that all these guys show, actually. So uh, we are now uh, taking on this, and I've been discussing, uh, actually, with the, uh, Stock uh, with the Stockholm uh, County Council, that's what they are called, and the commissioner there, Anna Starbrink, that we should try to do something in Stockholm because there are over 3,000 clinics working with this certified process in, in, in the United States. And we have had some representatives from European countries here in Stockholm discussing how to continue this. But I have a question for you. So we talk about one aspect is music being able to reach you, being able to reach maybe parts of your brain that, that, that that doesn't connect. Yeah. But you talk also about something else, the elasticity of the mm. brain, and maybe even changing yeah. the brain with music. Exactly. Is that so? But, but that's so true for the, for the brain. The brain is plastic. And most of the things that we do today, uh, 
uh, will be forgotten. It's automized, actually. When you drive here in the car, you forget what you did. If you didn't meet an idiot you know, on, on the road, then you remember. But, but after this talk, and if you, if you show attention, listen and think, then you create sort of a new brain, new synapses in the brain. So you leave this day, if you if you're, uh, listen to what we say and try to learn and try to, to question what I'm saying, then the brain gets alive. And, and remember, use it or lose it. Mm. Use your brain or lose it. So it's like a muscle. If you don't use your muscles, you lose the power of the muscle and you lose the power of the brain. And you will forget your old memories. They're not there forever if you don't use your brain regularly. And music is one such thing that, that uh, creates new synapses and, and has a very positive effect. Also on learning and some other sort of... Uh, so we'll, we'll show a few uh, yeah, pictures from yeah. the bed. Let's and please. I can just, while we do this, uh, I can just ascertain you all that using your brain in the best way today is of course joining us at Polar Talks. So you should feel comfortable yeah. with everything expanding in a, a, yeah. in, in a very good way. Yeah, so. So, so the address to this homepage is Kulturella Jarnan or culturalbrain.se. That's where we have all the, the stuff gathered. And to start with, we have a Polar Prize uh, uh, edition of the... <laughs> of, of the so be, because Sting has been in a f camera. They have analyzed Sting's brain. Uh, and I can tell you that, that Yo-Yo Ma is giving presentations with some creativity institutes in, in Los Angeles. Uh, Björk, also a Polar Prize laureate, she has been uh, recording, broadcasted a program, uh, meeting uh, Oliver Sacks and David Attenborough, and not the least René Fleming. Uh, only two weeks ago, she signed up and produced a paper in YAMA, which is one of the leading medical mm. journals, that NIH, the most prestigious uh, uh, supporter of medical research, are now going into the field, entering the field. So I think that we have reached a turning point. So please visit the homepage, but we have another. Uh, do we have time for that? We don't, but we have to see it because we all we want have to. We have to see it. Yes. Because this is really uh, something that is uh, important also for Wayne Shorter. Because Charles Lim, if you visit his, his uh, TED talk, he will talk about the jazz musician being able to improvise and what happens in the brain, and which things that don't happen in people that are into classical music. So also improvisation is a brain thing. And this is something they can reach through uh, the web page as well. The web page, so visit please the web, visit web that. page. It's and will you promise to be with us next year as well to show us the developments? Absolutely, if I'm invite, invited, you well, never know. <laughs> you will definitely be invited. And if I'm alive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>